Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. Talking about the upcoming, or the actual, we're in the legislative session. Talking about bills in this legislative session the deal with LGBTQ issues. We have with us Chris Sanders, is the executive director of the Tennessee Equality Project, concerned about some of these bills. There are 20 bills. That's a lot. There are 20 bills um, that, that you're concerned about this year. Five passed last year that you worked against. You say this year is worse than last year. And we just went over one of those bills. It's um, House Bill 800. What else kind of mm -hmm. stands out to you? Let's go over a couple more of the bills that concern you this year. Sure. There is a bill that says that school personnel, meaning principals and teachers, don't have to use a student's pronouns. Now, this is, to some of your viewers, a new discussion, but if you're but for those of your viewers who have been on Zoom over the last two years during the pandemic or any other, you know, uh, web management meeting software, they would have seen many people with their pronouns by their name. It might have even been a part of the beginning of the meeting where people introduce themselves, their name and their pronouns and where they live or wherever it is if you're working in a remote group. That's a fairly common experience for people who have ha been having web meetings or Zoom meetings. So that's what pronouns are. They just refer to your gender identity. Well, there are kids who uh, also uh, introduce themselves with their pronouns and they want to make sure that their peers and their teachers and principals are using the pronoun that corresponds to their gender. This bill says that teachers and principals don't have to do that. Now, I, you know, on the one hand, I kind of get if the idea of it's new to you and you would make mistakes in trying. What I don't get is that while the state won't do anything for trans kids, it is helping adults pick on them better. And that's what this bill is. This is saying to adults, if you want to fight with trans kids, we'll help you out. You know, that's where we are as a state. I mean, again, for, the, for your viewers who are new to this whole idea, I get why it might take you a bit to get into the whys and wherefores of pronouns. But what you need to understand about this bill is that it's saying to principals and teachers, you can call kids whatever you want to basically, knowing that it will inflict emotional turmoil on them and still get away with it. And that's what I think is really weird and ugly about our public policy in the state right now. So, so this bill says they don't have to. Do they have to now? I mean, is, there's, is there a requirement now? It's kind of, it, I guess it would be just um, So there's not polite. a statute now that says directly you must use a student's pronouns. But where it comes into play is if the federal government starts saying based on Title IX that you have to respect a student's gender and you bully a student by using the wrong gender with them, there's a possibility it would open school districts up to lawsuits, complaints to the U.S. Department of Ed, etc. Well, guess what? There's nothing a state law can do to prevent that from happening. All a state law could do is prevent a teacher or a principal from getting sued in state court. It could not prevent any kind of federal lawsuit from moving forward or the school getting in trouble with the federal government. If the federal government decides to go hardcore and say, look, we're drawing a line here, you're not going to discriminate against trans kids or any kid based upon the child's pronouns. So, um, but what this bill is basically doing is trying to shield adults who might uh, want to pick on kids or not recognize kids for the gender that they are. 
And how likely is it that this will pass, in your opinion? Where, do, where does it stand? What, what, what are your thoughts? It's interesting. This bill has been deferred twice in the House K-12 through subcommittee, which is usually a sign that there are problems with the bill. Now, it could be that the sponsor is just busy, and I don't speak on behalf of the sponsor quite obviously. But... Um, there is a fiscal note attached that indicates there could be this could have implications for federal funding if it proceeds, possibly. And I suspect that's part of the reason. Uh, but also, I think probably the committee and the sponsor are hearing from some people who are saying, why are you helping adults pick on kids? This is really odd. Um, so I, I think it's a mix of things. Now, that said, uh, the bill is up next week after being deferred twice. The House could decide to roll with it and move forward. And before um, we have a call here, I want to take the call. But uh, before we move on, sure. I like how you, you address that this, this is new for some people, the whole concept of pronouns. It right. probably makes some people, they, 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 they don't get it. And so... Right. Help help those who 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 don't want to be mean spirited. They just they don't get it. You know, they you would say they to someone or you know someone. It, it should you know to many people. It, it's obvious what the pronoun is. I guess just walk yep. us through a one hundred and one for someone who genuinely doesn't get it. Right. This is a way of saying who you are and how people can talk about you without them having to guess. That's how I would put it. And while it may appear obvious about some people, it wouldn't about others. And there are people who you would, you know, based on stereotypes, assume they have one pronoun when in fact um, might use the pronoun they. And you might think that's ridiculous, but it costs you nothing to respect that person. It really doesn't in the end. You know, when someone changes their name when they get married, you might forget the first couple of times, but you adapt and you would say, Mr. So-and-so with a hyphenated name or Mrs. Jones, who used to be Ms. Smith. You can learn that. So you can also learn someone's pronouns. It's not that big of a leap. You can get used to it, especially if being kind and polite to people and respectful is important to you. If you want to bully people, well, I guess you don't have to use their pronouns. That's the way I look at it. Okay. All right. Let's go to the phones here. Let's go to M. Hello, M. Hello. Hello. What's on your mind? Hi. I have kind of like a question. It's a two-parter question. So why should somebody outside the community care about these bills and how do parents educate their children, especially parents who are supportive of this community, educate their children to identify when an adult might be, I guess, bullying these kids? And I'm going to hang up and listen. Okay. Sure. No, I, I appreciate the question. I would think anybody who has empathy cares how other people are treated. And when you have the state coming in and using the power of law to enshrine different kinds of bullying of different groups, that reflects on all of us as residents of this state. And is that the kind of public policy we want to be pushing or, or do we want to push a public policy that welcomes everybody? Another reason is you never know when a friend or loved one is going to come out as a member of the LGBT community. There are all kinds of people in your life who it might surprise you that they are a member of our community. And if they're important to you, create a climate where people who you don't know are LGBTQ who are important to you could come out to you. I would say that. Another reason is that ultimately this stuff could affect Tennessee education funding, if we decide to enshrine discrimination in our laws, it could affect our federal funding. And we already don't have adequate funds for education in this state. That's just a fact. That's why we keep tinkering with the formula. 
and it's being tinkered with again this year, I think in a very bad way, but I'll leave that to another program, Ben. You can have a, a guest who understands it far better than I to explain all that. Um, but you can rearrange the formula again and again, but we're just not spending enough money on education in this state compared to other states. So those are a variety of impacts. Now, how can you help identify? If you understand that uh, a teacher or a principal at your child's school, even if your child is not trans, non-binary, gay, lesbian, bisexual, is using the wrong pronoun, you can bring that up in a parent-teacher meeting. You can bring that up to the principal. You can also speak out in the public comment time at your county school board. You can talk to your state representative or state senator about this bill. But those are all things you can do. And if it doesn't affect you, that's a great opportunity to step in as an ally and say, look, I've looked at this thing. It doesn't directly hit me, but I don't like to see people mistreated. Please stop. Don't do this in my name. I am a parent in this district. Very interesting. Okay, I appreciate that question, or both those questions. What are some, all right, let's, let's keep going down the list of bills here. So we've identified two. What's another bill that's um, on your radar? Yeah, there is uh, a big bill, and it's been in a lot of states, that bans gender-affirming care for trans youth. And this is by Representative Reagan, and he brought a similar bill last year is for the moment shelved that bill and this is a tougher version of that bill it bans gender affirming care for youth what what exactly does that mean so what does that mean right so there are youth who with their counselors parents and physicians have determined that it would be a good idea for them to take uh, puberty blockers or hormones uh, that will help align them more with their gender. And there is a standard of care that has been developed that Tennessee would be unilaterally upending. Um, in Tennessee, traditionally, we have let physicians and medical groups determine what the standard of care is for any number of areas of medicine and we have not put that in the Tennessee law code. This would be an instance of the state stepping in and saying, we know better than science and the medical professionals, and we're gonna say you can't do X in the Tennessee code. So yeah, there's a lot of talk about don't interfere with you know, doctor and patient confidentiality, and those con you're saying this, this does just that. It absolutely does. It absolutely does. And not only the confidentiality, but it just bans the practice and criminalizes the physicians who would be involved. And how likely is it, in your opinion, that this moves forward or passes? It moved forward in a limited way last year, a different version of the bill. It, it moved through a lot of House committees. Um, this new bill could absolutely move. There are a great group of physicians who are working against it. LGBTQ advocates are working against it. There are counselors working against this bill. Uh, and I should, for a moment, Ben, go back and say, librarians across the state are doing a great job on these bills about obscenity libraries and the like. Uh, and thank God for librarians everywhere in this state who do a great job of providing resources for kids every week of the school year. Um, but they're also great defenders of free speech and age appropriate books. They absolutely believe in that and they are doing incredible work. So we don't do this alone, Ben. We, on any bill that we work on, we don't do it alone. There are all kinds of allied groups and organizations that step in. You know, a number of these have Bill of Rights implications, so the ACLU is involved in some of these bills, and they are stalwart defenders uh, of the Bill of Rights. Um, 
So it's just a lot of groups have have a care and concern about these bills. All right, we are going to take a break. I want to come back talk about. There's one the governor is is bringing, or at least he's he's um, strongly supporting. So we'll take a break. We'll come back talk about that. Be back right after this.